guys, this is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show. And on this episode, we're reviewing Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, but also the last trilogy of the Star Wars uh, series. So we did a, a quick, quick-ish, you know, spoiler-free review of Rise of Skywalker. So if that's what you're looking for, then this is not the review for you. This is not the review you're looking for. Yeah. Um, you want to go to the spoiler-free one. If you've already seen the movie and you want to hear us dissect it in, in spoiler-ridden detail, then this is the right one for you. So right out of the gate in our spoiler-free review, um, the, the two of you guys really liked the movie. Mm -hmm. And I was loop, Loved it. lukewarm Loved it. about it. Um, after having a, a couple of weeks to think about it, I'm less than lukewarm now. You, uh, you really don't like it. I mean, listen. I enjoyed the quality of the film. It was, it was, it was beautiful to look at. The special effects were magnificent. Um, this was definitely the best of the three of this trilogy. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, there was things that, um, that Abrams did to fix a lot of the plot problems and a lot of the uh, character development and character relationship problems. You know, there was a lot of these fixes or whatever, but you can only dress up a pig so much because yeah. it's sitting on top of this trilogy, it, it tries to answer and, and finalize a broken trilogy. Yeah. I wouldn't even consider these three movies a legitimate trilogy, and I can give you a very good explanation very easily right now. They didn't write it as a trilogy. They wrote one movie, then they wrote another movie, and then they wrote another movie, and it shifted gears massively in, this, in the second movie. And in the third movie, when, when Abrams got control back, and he's the director again, he tried to retrofix fix everything, and it just yeah. seems like a big, messy... Not very it was a big mess. Yeah, it was just, it was it was not an evolved, inspiring film. It was very much uh, a difficult story to watch, in my opinion. So I, I, all of, I agree in that there's a lot of problems, but and all of the problems derive from the trilogy, not from this movie. Mm -hmm. And if you put those problems aside, this was a good movie, and this was I think the best it could have been given what it was trying to, given where it was, right? Given the task that it had. So I, I liked the, in, the reintroduction of Palpatine. Uh, I liked that, the, the arc of Rey. I liked actually the arc of Kylo Ren, of Ben Solo. You know, I, I, I liked their relationship. Best arc of the last yeah, trilogy. Yeah, I think it really worked well. Um, I think that they, uh, they tied up you know, the Luke Skywalker thing as well as they could. Um, and it, it was, you know, was, was well-paced. It was an enjoyable movie. It, I, I enjoyed watching it. Um, and I just tried to like get out of my mind my dislike for the whole approach they took to this trilogy. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree, Steve, with a lot, pretty much everything that you said. Uh, as a movie experience, Jay, you closed your segment saying that it wasn't a, a good movie to watch. I thought it was a fantastic movie to watch. Yeah. I had such an amazingly good time. The, the closure and the callbacks and the, and the cool little ideas and the throwbacks, all these little things that they did, I think really made it a wonderful movie. Mm -hmm. I, I had a blast. I was just laughing. I was, I got, you got, my eyes welled up a couple of times. They had some really good ideas. So as a movie experience and tying up this trilogy of trilogies, I thought they, they did a fantastic job, much better than I thought they would do going in. You know, yeah, having low expectations going in that, was, that, was that helpful. That certainly helps. That's, always, that's just general great advice yeah. for any movie that's, that's yeah. like but in the, the stratosphere problem is, like though, this. You know, it's very hard to remove a portion. Of, you know, when you say, okay, we're going to just look at this last act of a three-act story by itself, it doesn't really stand alone. I mean, the, the things about it that, that Abrams did right didn't really fix the overarching problems, yeah. right? I mean, again, this was the best made, I think, of the three. But it was really riddled with, with massive story problems and character problems. I mean, and you, the first thing you said, Steve, was that you, you appreciated bringing Pal Palpatine back. I hated that. Why, why would we bring back Palpatine? Now, the very first thing that occurred to me... Well, partly because it made sense of it. It tried to make partly sense of, it, of the plot message. Exactly. I, I, yeah. I see that. I could see that. But yeah. you know what else it does, which is really bad? It makes movies 4, 5, and 6 kind of irrelevant. The three, the three people that well, we, the whole trilogy makes them irrelevant. Right, right, right. But, the bringing about Palpatine didn't create that right. problem or even make it worse. The, the the whole idea of this trilogy made the four, five, and six obsolete. That's what I don't like about right. it. Yeah, but very specifically, exactly. you could draw a parallel line from Luke and Vader killing the Emperor and the Emperor not actually being killed. Yeah, that to me, like, it just makes me think all of that effort that those characters put in and the sacrifices that they made in movies four, five, and six mm -hmm. were ultimately meaningless. Mm -hmm. And I, I really... It's true. I really... Yeah. 
hate Abrams for doing that. I hate him for for try you know in, in, in essence undoing the three movies of yeah. this of this. These three movies. But you're getting, you're getting back to the core problem with this trilogy. Right. I agree. That's the thing I hate the most. I wanted to build on that four, five, and six. Right, build on that story, extend the arcs, extend the galaxy, the universe that of Star Wars. Give us more stories. You know, um, and it's okay to have the older characters sort of fading into the background as a new generation comes forward. Mm -hmm. That's all. You know, that's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the idea that they just hit the reset button and they go. You know, never mind. Everything you thought was a success was actually a failure. Everything sucks again, and now we got to do it all over again. Yeah. Right? I hated that. Yeah, there's no reason. And like, there was, there was with... no rescuing that. I agree. But exactly. That, that wasn't this movie's problem. That was right. the trilogy's problem. Remember, Return of the, Jet the Jedi was kind of like a, a retread of episode of the New Hope as well, right? Because yeah. oh look, we got another Death Star. We got to destroy the Death Star again. So even that, even that yeah. one in the yeah. beloved, you know, original trilogy, even that was a bit was a bit of a retread. Yeah. So that's so I would argue that that's kind of what Star Wars is about. Re lots of retreads here and there. Oh, uh, don't say that. I don't sure. agree with that. No, it's not. It's not. But all it doesn't about, have to be. It doesn't no, have to be. I don't think it be. was. I don't think it was uninspired for the original trilogy to have a Death Star two. You know, and keeping in mind the Death Star two was much bigger. Than the original Death Star, it wasn't the same exact blueprint. It was a much bigger, monstrous yeah, they, thing. Um, they, you know, they didn't really stress that. I mean, yeah, it, it was a obvious. shock. I remember watching it, being like, "Oh my God, they're rebuilding the Death. We already yeah, did this, right?" You know? But Bob, like adding insult to injury is never the right thing to do. I mean, these three movies needed to fully establish brand new characters that we want to see more of and and tell this story. And what they ended up doing was they ended up I raping agree. movies four, five, and six. For all of their yeah. intriguing plot elements and things that, that were very hard to earn. I mean, Lucas worked his ass off to make that trilogy. The other directors, like Kushner, the, the other people that were involved in making, making this franchise killed themselves to put the quality into it that they did. And, the, and these three movies, like, just, you know, just mined it for everything yeah. it was worth. I mean, this movie was such a retread of Return of the Jedi. It was a joke. I mean, I can, well, we can go to specific scenes where we're watching the Emperor... Talk to a acolyte, whatever, like a young, young Jedi, a young and Jedi, taunt them about killing their friends and the. Yeah, I know. And literally point out the window or point up through a hole and watch the space battle. That's like, come on, that was like you literally just took the scene. The Emperor's lines were like robbed from from the, the uh, Return mm. of the Jedi. Like his lines were even the same. It's, it just really, it really rubs. And they use the same the, actor. They use the same <laughs> actor. Can you Bob. imagine? Yeah. But look, <laughs> guys, I, I love, I love that actor. Yeah, I love that that character. The Emperor is so cool. He's such a, he's such a villainous bad guy. You know, and this is like a, a, a bad guy who you don't know his background. You have no idea what his motivation is. Not like with Darth Vader, right? Like I love the backstory of Darth Vader, and I love what we get to learn about him in the movies. But the Emperor is just a bad I hate guy. hate sand. And it works. It's very hard to have a bad yeah. guy with no background where it works. Yes. Like, for some reason, he is just unbelievably evil. And he's, you know, filled with the, with the dark force. And he's got machinations going on that we don't understand. I love the character. But bringing him back to me was so cheap. It was mm. so cheap. You know, first he's, like, connected to this thing. It's like, are you kidding me? And then you have all, a lot, all of these plot points that get brought up and like shift real quick and no answers. Like, and, you know, look, you, you can do a few of these in a movie. You could bring up something really big, like all of the Sith that were in like those audience type yeah. seats. Now, look, reading, sure, you know, I didn't pick this up in the movie, which is the movie's fault because I'm paying attention to every detail. I, apparently, wow. those were like spirits yeah. that what? he's conjuring. Yeah, he's conjuring to intimidate Ray. This is, and this is really what a lot of people are talking about online. I didn't see that when I watched I saw well, it as those that? are people. Of no, course. I, I, it wasn't clear. that I would, It was definitely ambiguous. It was not clear. You never actually saw a person. Yeah. You saw hooded figures. And it, it, they weren't you know, ghostly or yeah, but I, I even in seeing anything. the movie, I was like, I, 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 it's, it's unclear what they are. Yeah. We, we don't matter. know if they're, yeah, but it didn't matter. matter. It does they didn't matter. Dwell it. It. Well, I know they didn't dwell on it, but it had enough impact where lots of people are talking about, it. like, well, who were those people? You know, like we yeah. can't. Here's another thing. You know, I'm going to shotgun you guys a little bit right now. Who was manning those hundred plus star destroyers? Yeah, where did the people come from? How were they? The, where the emperor did that, hooked up to that machine, he was able to feed and you know curate all of those people that can fly those ships. He had the resources to build those ships over a few decades. And then I've got another thing because it just the, the list just goes on. When you really start going down this this rabbit hole, it doesn't end. 
why did he build all of those ships that were essentially Death Stars yeah. by themselves? Mm -hmm. When he had the New Order, like he, he told Snoke, you're going to build the New Order, and it's going to be all of these other ships. And all like, like what? Does this guy have endless uh, resources? It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. He already had a huge fleet that already basically was halfway taking over the galaxy, and then he had another secret one cached away. Like, why wouldn't he just say, I'm going to take all those ships and just get this job done? It just it is bad storytelling. Now, in the moment when I was in the theater and I was excited and I'm watching it, yes, I enjoyed. Yeah, but I had it. a problem with that in the theater, even just like yeah, so you know, it is ridiculous logistically. You can't even think logistically about how, where did, did he conjure this fleet from? Yeah, you know, I know. It, it makes seems no, weird. it makes no sense. And it is a retread. You know, the, I think the best critique of this movie was from XKCD, which basically had a, mm -hmm. before the movie came out, he had a Star Wars spoiler generator, and it was just like generic things that, that are in the Star that Wars are go, that's going to happen. And like one of them was, you know, we have to destroy the Death Star, the fleet, the thing, like this is the mega Pick super. your option. Yeah, right. It's, it's like a like, drop down. You can yeah. be like, the plot this wheel. character can do one of these 10 yes. things, and every one of them... We're like, going to resurrect some old character. He predicted every aspect yeah, of the movie, yeah. pretty much, um, but not in detail. Just like one of, some old character is going to come back, and you have to destroy some kind of new death, you know, right, apocalypse that's what Abrams, machine. Abrams, in the two movies he helmed, he completely robbed movies yeah. four, five, and six. Yeah. And, you know, look, Abrams, I'm talking to you, pal. Over here. Get some new material. Yeah, why don't uh -huh. you try writing something that we haven't seen before? Like, why would you even think about dipping back into yeah. that old well? Like, we wanted brand new stuff. Okay, but we... we but that's, me... that's that one core problem yes. that is plagued the entire trilogy. And yes, it manifests in a hundred ways. We don't have to hit all of the hundred ways. We can yeah. just say it all file in under all that one. Right, I won't talk about... But I won't that talk aside... About the... They did a brilliant job weaving Leia's old footage yeah. into this oh, film. Yeah, I was that was done so well, it blew my mind. And I and whoever is responsible for it, man, excellent, excellent. Um, I, I felt like she was in the movie in a way that like I just didn't think was going to be possible. And, yeah. I, I was, and, and I was very curious to know how they were going to do it. Now that said, man, I didn't like her death. Yeah, but she was dead. I mean, they didn't, they, they I mean... Carrie know, Fisher was gone. They had to. I no, Steve. I'm sorry, but when you make a 200 million dollar movie, you don't get to say things like that. You really don't. Think about it. Think about what's yeah, happening right now. You saw in in Rogue One, which was the best of the modern Star Wars movies. The the worst thing they did was have Leia turn around yeah. and have a CG Leia. You know, and I, we, I didn't want to. I'm I'm glad we didn't have a CG Leia in that scene. But they it just was, had her walk off and die. It's fine. I we just, all knew uh, Carrie Fisher was dead. I just didn't like how easily she died like now supposedly she was trained right so luke which was one of my favorite scenes in the whole movie was when luke was training her when they were young yeah, I yeah. that was, I like so that was cool. great yeah. that, that that blew my i mean to me the whole movie evaporated and i wanted to stay right there with them and watch yeah. what was going that on that was back great yeah. now that said so now she expends all of her energy to reach out to ben one last time right to kylo ren so she reaches out to him and he has this moment you know brr, he gets like this shiver kind of moment, and you, re, you know, reality check type of thing. And then uh, Han Solo shows up. Mm -hmm. Come on. I mean, talk about cheesy. Talk about, like, trying to, like, shoehorn Harrison Ford into this movie as Han Solo. After Han Solo's dead. Now, now we know it wasn't really Han Solo. No. Couldn't have been. But he's having a conversation with him. It wasn't, didn't feel like a Force vision. And then we kind of are supposed to be buying this idea that it was really just his own mind doing that mm -hmm. you know it's like no nope Han Solo was there and he had a talk with his son and they had a meaningful conversation and it should never have taken place it just was bad writing from the moment they, that the, yeah, well, they, they thought a, about bringing it back I kind of liked it I disagree it was a touching moment and it but was he could, but Bob, good, they, good they couldn't closure. write a way to make it legitimate it wasn't legitimate if it took me and probably hundreds of thousands of other people like me out, out in that moment. If I'm sitting there watching a movie and I'm like, what, what, how, where, out of nowhere, what, what is going? I literally said to myself, how is this happening? These, it's the one lines, it's the, it's the tiny little nuggets of information, though, that make moments like that digestible. That didn't happen, and it happened a lot. And mm -hmm. that's, that's really my, you know, because, like, look, if that was the only thing, trust me, I loved seeing... Yeah. Harrison Ford play Han again, and I love that he got to Ben. I love that what he said to Ben yeah. got to him. But it really pissed me off that like it was done in such a cheesy like, really like that's the way you're going to bring him back. Abrams had one hell of a job 
trying to recover from the mess that Ryan Johnson made yeah. with Rise of the Jedi. The Last Jedi. Rise of the Last Jedi. The last Jedi. <laughs> Return of the Last Jedi. Yeah. <laughs> the Last Jedi the last strikes Jedi back. back. <laughs> the Last Jedi, right? A new Last Jedi. In my opinion, now we don't have to go down this crazy rabbit hole again, but like, I really didn't like that movie. It was it was like a slapstick Star Wars movie. It was very ill-conceived. Yeah. There was a couple of things in there that were, you know, I agree. I like the relationship building that happened yeah. between Kylo and Rey. Yeah, the writing was terrible. It was terrible. Yeah, there's no question about that. Uh, the whole trilogy was terrible in terms of the writing. Uh, there was there's there's fan fiction out there that blows this these movies away. And Why don't they do more of that? Take, get, well, yeah. Looking at at this. No, a serious look at this fan fiction and taking that as, even as a starting point. Yeah, just for ideas. Some, just for yeah, shoot right, ideas. some great stuff. Yeah. They, they could have, this whole last trilogy could have been based It should have been completely fan. different. Yes. It should have been completely, yeah. completely different. Should have been, I, I would have been happy if there was no hint of Luke, Leia, Han, any of that yep. stuff. New place, new people, new people. Me too, you know, Bob. Come Me on. Too. Hey, look, like, like, they introduce characters, they don't even use them, and then when they do use them, they use them in an annoying way, like the Knights of Ren. Okay, so these were... From what I read, because I didn't pick this up when I watched okay, the movie, yeah. the Knights of Ren, their origin was that these were people that Luke were training. Yeah. And he, he took, Whoa. right, isn't that cool? Yeah. Well, they, didn't, they, didn't, they, could, they so easily uh, could have made yeah. the, the Knights of Ren so much yeah. cooler in the first The Knights of Ren, I mean, you think about, like, The Empire Strikes Back, you had the scene with the, with the um, bounty hunters. Right. And think of how cool that was. Yes. And how much came out of that. Yeah. Right? Like, every one of those characters was like, who is that guy? Who is that guy? Right? Yeah. Like, who is that robot? Who is that yeah. guy? Yeah. And then, of course, you know, Boba Fett. And then I was thinking, like, the whole thing with the, the Knights of Ren, like, there is so much untapped potential yeah. with those characters that they just left that it was, it, it, that was disappointing. Like, so, those, each of those characters sh should have dropped drawn my attention, yep. Yep. They and should have made me wonder, what's that guy's backstory? Yep. They should right? have each had a shtick, they could have each had yeah. different weapons, but none and of they them were just taken, genericized. And yeah. It wouldn't have taken much to do that, right? No, Bob, it, it, little, we're talking about 30 seconds. Set, right. So not only did they not develop them at all, but they bring, you know, they really weren't in, in the middle movie, but in the last movie here, they bring them back, and now, what happens? They turn on, they turn on uh, Kylo Ren, for no reason, for no reason. Every time I come in the kitchen, you in the kitchen. In the goddamn refrigerator. Now, okay, so maybe they were Dark Force users, or, and maybe maybe the uh, Emperor was manipulating them or controlling them, but you don't get any information. Right, Next no thing information. we know, Ben it's shows up to yeah. save Rey, and instead of his, his men, the Knights of Ren, like <laughs> being like, help me. That would have been cool if they helped. It would have been really cool, but nope, they have to have yes, another boss, fight. Yes, you know what I mean? That should so, have been a whole thing. You're yeah, right. I agree. That ridiculous. Was like, that was a throwaway. You know, Kylo Ren gets thrown off the cliff, and then you're like, oh, he's dead. And then he survives. And then he comes back. Then he re now he resurrects Ray because they're like a dipole apparently. Like the mm. two of them are like the you know sharing. I don't know. Like, it's like whoa, so much complexity. It's like okay, so then now he resurrects her and transfers his life force into her. And I'm like, I, by the end of that, I was so emotionally exhausted from like. The jigs wow. and jags. It was like it was like so complicated. Yeah, I thought that on. worked. I love that scene I thought so that much. Jay, so much. He he came. Uh, he he survived. He comes up, and you and you're thinking that all right, he's gonna he's gonna heal her or whatever, or he's gonna sacrifice himself. And then and then then when you realize he's gonna he's he's gonna actually give his life for her, which is a, such a wonderful, such a meaningful moment. And then I'm like, oh, you know, I hope you know he didn't get to kiss her type of type of thing. You know, the mm -hmm. things that go through your mind. And he he got the kiss. Some people didn't like the fact that they actually did kiss, but I thought yeah. it was a, I thought it was a yeah. it was it was well done. It was such a great scene. I love that scene. He he really to him to me. Adam Driver is a standout. This yeah. entire trilogy. Oh, I love him. He yeah, he's killed fantastic. It, killed it. His character is like the only character with a real arc of like mm -hmm. almost anybody in the entire show. This guy it was fantastic. Loved him. Loved the character, and I loved his ending. Yeah. It's great. He dying is so poignant because I thought, oh yeah, I remember what I was gonna. I was thinking, he's not gonna die. You know, I was like, all right. They live happily ever after. That's cool, but he really needs to die to really be poignant. And then, but then he did. It's like, yes, that's that was the way you needed to end that. Yeah, was, mm -hmm. I loved it. Loved that ending. They did a lot of uh, fan service, which I wasn't really that opposed to. Like, I liked that Chewbacca yep. got the medal. I liked. They did a lot of these things in the film that were Easter eggs that were really cool to, to someone like me who knows the franchise as well as I do. So I did appreciate that. There was a lot of thoughtfulness right, good. I did too. in there that I thought was really cool. But overall, again, you know, we're kind of all agreeing on just different levels here that yeah. the, the trilogy was so broken 
and so mismanaged and so poorly written that how, you know it can't end incredibly well because your foundation and your middle structure yeah. were just not yeah, there. Yeah, low expectations. Was yeah. yeah, but don't forget, this wasn't just the ending of the last trilogy. This was an ending of the of all three trilogies. Yeah, so, so if you if you take a step, if you go up a you know a little higher in altitude and look down, I think it's much more rewarding as an end to the trilogy of trilogies than the the last trilogy. And that, that's how I look at it. Yeah. And that's why that's why all the callbacks and Palpatine and all that yeah. coming back. All right, you know, fine. Just, just let's do this. And I think it was just a rewarding, just tying that bow. I thought it was, it was very. very but I think well that done. you know, hopefully that the franchise and Disney will learn their lessons from this. Like Mandalorian, Mandalorian, yes, it works. We want good writing. We want good characters. We don't want retreads. We want new stories. Yep. And just give us what you know, leverage what's good about Star Wars and the universe and the franchise, right. and don't insult our intelligence. Mm -hmm. You know, the fans are fairly sophisticated and. We're not just looking for this mindless nostalgia. We need more than that. Look, we can't know the property better than they do. Yeah. The writers have to know it better than people like us who have been watching it for our whole lives. Yeah. Star Wars took a major hit because of this trilogy. Mm -hmm. Major, major hit. Like there are, there, you know, there are people that do, are doing review. I watch a lot of reviews. They've and, canceled more movies. I yeah, mean. they canceled movies. You have people like saying, you know, I'm done reviewing Star Wars. Like just a lot of negativity because th this series, yeah. this, this last trilogy, just wasn't anywhere Mandalorian near. Mandalorian may save them. Yeah, the Mandalorian. Yeah. I think I, what we're hoping is that it brings it to the TV. Yeah. Look. The content is good. People are enjoying it. They're actually excited talking about the characters. You know, stupid little details like his armor are exciting me. You know, that's yeah. that's what I want out of these yeah. movies. I didn't see one blaster in these three last movies that I loved. And I didn't see one cool blaster. I was looking too. Yeah, I just didn't see yeah. anything yeah. inspiring. You know, it's like you know, man. I like Leia's lightsaber. Yeah, I mean that, that was cool. I liked it. You know, Ray had a yellow lightsaber. There's yeah. some meaning to that. You know, with that yeah. I, my takeaway is that she's she's really not. Jedi, she's more of like a neutral force user, yeah. kind of like mm. embodying the whole force. I don't, you know, I don't know what, what the experts say about that, but that's how I kind of took it. Because yellow, you know, if you know the lightsaber color, it's green to blue is good, red to orange is bad. Yeah, and yellow is kind, kind of in the middle. middle. Yeah. Yep. All right, guys. So uh, we would love to hear what Oof. you think. <laughs> I mean, I, I really, I really feel like. Um, it's finally over and we can move forward. Yeah, we can get past it now. Yeah. But I would like our audience to talk to us. Let us know what you think about the movie. Let us know what you thought about this review. You could always go to our website, alphaquadrantinthenumber6.com. You could find out everything that we got going on there. And we have a very cool thing coming up. We're going to be releasing our trip to Weta. Mm -hmm. And we got to interview some, some of the makers and builders and, and people that very cool. run it. We have a really cool story to tell that you're going to really like. And also, don't forget, Bob, why don't you bring out the... Uh, the Tri-Emitter Phaser Rifle. Don't forget the Star Trek Phaser Rifle Contest. You can go to alphaquadrant6.com forward slash T3 for, uh, that's because there's, there are three emitters up there. You could win this Phaser Rifle. All you gotta do is, is register. <laughs> right, is that cool, Bob? Love it. Guys, we'll see oh. you next time and we're looking forward to more good Star Wars. Let's wait, we'll wait it out. From what, what do you want to see? What's the, what could be the best Star Wars TV show that you could ever one see? One that I can't imagine right now. Right. I, but Steve, I swear to God, you know, my answer was going to be one that I haven't thought of. Exactly. Yet. That's what I want to Agreed. see. Absolutely. All right, till next time.